Wow, man. Um, they got beat. Let's just be real. Um, Real Madrid got beaten, but that wasn't the story of the game. This is a very complex game to break down because if you looked at the scoreline and you didn't really watch the game fully, it's very easy to say, all right, Atletico Madrid got destroyed, Real Madrid. And the narrative is like, oh my gosh, Cristiano leaves and look, Real Madrid are now horrible. They're, they're now um, a, a crap team and they're, and they're going nowhere. So this just shows how important Cristiano was to Real Madrid. Cristiano Ronaldo is the greatest player of all time. No. Okay. If you don't have a brain, that is the kind of crap you'll come up with. Because this is a very complicated thing to break down. So how do we unpack this? This is going to take. This is going to remember, guys. Press pause, get a meal because we're we're, we're going to go in. I told you, guys. This is a football. This is half of football hearts. This is proper analysis. It's not ranting. This isn't football tribalism. This is breaking down things footballing wise. So, let us start off with this. Um, Diego Costa. I'm going to argue is the best striker in the world. That's my argument. Now, again, I'm not going to just say that on a equivocal. Let's say that's a fact. I normally say that. But I'm just putting it out there and I'm willing to argue with anybody that he's the best striker in the world. Because I think the, the issues he causes for teams, his strength, his determination, his tenacity, his finishing, his anticipation, his movement, his awareness of where to be, right place, right time. He can create a goal f for himself. He can finish. He can head. He can get at the end of a cross. He can get at the end of a, a through ball. He can score in so many different ways. He's not limited in how he can hurt you, which makes that, you know, this guy, I'm sorry, I'm going to put an argument that he's the best striker as of now, right now in the world. And when you look at that goal that, that he scored, do you know how tight that angle was? But look, man, I told him, it's going to be tough because there's an argument that Brick of the Game could, could be Real Madrid's defense because you look at Ramos and Varane, they were at fault. Ramos, you, you got done by the, the flick from Costa and Varane. You have to act, act quickly. If you're going to make a big tackle, make that a tackle. Hesitation and that hesitation allowed the Costa to go in, get that extra yard, and rifle the ball past your boy Navas. But then Real Madrid, they slowly got back into the game and they were trying. They, 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 then they began to really get into the rhythm of what Lopetegui wants them to to do. And for Benzema, this is what you need. You can no longer be a facilitator for Cristiano. You now have to offer. 2025 20, G's. Can he do that? I don't know. He he can do that. Will he do that? I don't know. But from Benzema, that was it. That, that's what we that is what people know you for. You are a good striker. There is a quality striker there. There is a guy that can finish. But he's been so used to being the facilitator for your boy um Cristiano that he's never really had to have that shoulder the responsibility of you're a main striker. We need a minimum of 25 G's from you. But I thought that was a good goal. So once Real Madrid got that. Then they were, then they began to get into their rhythm and they began to control the game. And you were now seeing the difference between what Lopetegui is doing as opposed to what uh, your boy Zidane was doing. There are more short passes, more give and goes. It is much more intricate. There's much more movement, and you're seeing the kind of football that they want to play. They 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 want to really move the position the opposition around by quick passes. So whereas Zidane focused on quick, fast counter attack led by Cristiano. Lopetegui says, I want everyone involved. I want more pass and that movement. And for Benzema, I need you more involved in the game. I also need you to be my striker and also finish as well. Because I just thought that the, the combinations that Marcelo was having on the left were very sexy, very good. How Modric was re as we're releasing Asensio and, and so forth. You're seeing how this team can play sexier football. Because really, under Zidane, it wasn't really sexy football. It was effective, efficient for, for football of being effective mostly in the Champions League. But right now, I think Lopetegui, which is the thing that's in vogue now in football is you have to be good on the ball. Everybody needs to be technically good on the ball. You need to be able to walk in tight spaces. You need to be able to find those difficult passes and everybody needs to be two steps ahead before they receive the ball. That is that is what is in vogue now. Spain brought that in, Godot brought that in, Lopetegui is bringing it in and that is how everybody is operating, even Barcelona as well. So when they went 2-1 up, you know, Ramos getting the penalty... Real had control of the game. They had control of the game and it just seemed as if they would either get 3-1 or just, they would just see it as 2-1 and it seemed as if inferiority complex was going to come in. Atletico can speak to Real. Costa. Costa. Like, the, the two goals he scored were similar to the two goals he scored against Portugal. The first one, 
completely an amazing solo effort. The second one, right place, right time. And some strikers are either or. Some strikers are all there are right place, right time, i.e. if an Roy or an Inzaghi. Then the other strikers who can, I can create this myself, i.e. a Drogba or a George, George Ware. But Costa is both. Same thing again. Mistake by Ma Ma Marcelo. Didn't clear the ball properly. And again, for um, Varane and Ramos, man, you, you have to be aware of what is behind you. They were unaware of Costa's movements. They were all focused. Again, they were watching the ball, not watching the man. Because you have to, you can't have two guys all rushing to the ball. You, at any given point, you can just assume that if we have bodies towards the ball, we will dispossess. You have to always leave the chance that, what if he gets that pass off before 12 or double team on him you have to be aware of what's behind it they're not aware of what was behind them costa sneakily took a few steps back said look man let me hopefully i can get some 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 check and extra money he got the extra money he then cashed in his check um and then two two um and then he went to extra time the defense like that's why i said you know you cannot say a real madrid miss christian and and because because they miss Cristiano, but they do not miss Cristiano. They miss Cristiano because, yes, who knows Cristiano could have gotten a goal here or there and helped save them again. But at the same time, they were not missing Cristiano because Cristiano isn't a defender. If Real Madrid don't, do not make defensive mistakes, they win the game. The mistakes they made were defensive mistakes. Very simply, they were defensive mistakes that they were made. And that is how they, they got in. So... If they do not make defensive mistakes, because those goals were avoidable. The goals that they considered were avoidable. And when you look at the amazing goal by Saul Niguez, man, absolutely amazing goal. Great work from Pate, pulling the ball across rather than, um, sorry, cutting the ball back. And look, man, that, that's a quality finish. That was a quality finish. And Jesus, nah, nah, but Jesus Christ wouldn't have saved, saved, saved that Jesus. So that was an amazing, amazing finish. But same time again, he the amount of space he had, how nobody was covering him was insane. And I think maybe it was because I think people mentioned it. Casemiro coming off allowed, allowed, allowed the guy to go free. And I think at 3 2, you're like, wow. Then when he went to 4 2, I think when he went to 4 2, then you're like, look, all right, guys, come on. I mean, then I think that's when Remedy just completely shot, shot down. So overall, I am impressed with Atletico. Sorry. Sorry, let me... Yeah, that was a mistake there. Um, sorry, let me just... So basically, um, what's, 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 what's it called? Um, it was a case of which... I'm impressed with Atletico. I'm impressed. And guys saying that Atletico... You know what? Atletico could do something in, in, La, in La Liga. Lamar was impressive again it's his first full competitive game for them and i think he really gives them some footballing quality in there so actually this atletico team they're moving away from being physical and, and, and tough and effective to no these guys are actually now play quality football and i think lemar is there to really improve the kind of quality and ball position and creativity that they have in the game did griezmann do anything in this game whatsoever I'm, I'm not, did, was he even playing um but i'm impressive by how but the character that Atletico showed, especially led by Diego Costa, but the hearts that, that, that they showed and how they were able to really take the game to Real Madrid and they were able to defeat this inferiority complex that they've always had from Real. Because Real have always been that big brother who's always bullied them and beaten them up. But right now, the younger brother said, you know what? Screw you. We're going to come in and do our things. So I think for Atletico, it was very good of them that, that they were able to, um, you know, get back. Because look, Real Madrid, they had opportunities. They had chances. This season that Lopetegui has brought in looks very interesting. They are playing a better brand of football. But Benzema isn't used to being the guy who's going to score 20 to 25 Gs. Asensio has not been the main starter. Isco, again, I'm not sure whether you can entrust him to control this team. And I think it goes back to what I said before. Remedy, they need Hazard. I think this game showed that. They need someone with a different dimension, someone who can carry the ball, who can do something magical, who can do something crazy, who can conjure up something out of nothing. And this just shows you that's why I need to take a break from Twitter. Because people say, wait, why are you bringing in Hazard? Like, uh, Hazard hardly scores that many goals, that many assists, so where are they going to get the goals from? Do you know how, do you know how, how, how thick you have to, to be? Football is not a numbers game. Okay, that's for Amer American sports. Hazard 
is going to do something that will help someone score a goal. He's going to do something that will help someone get an assist that will lead to a goal. His footballing play will create situations that will lead up to a goal. So on the stat sheet, it wouldn't say assist or goal towards him. But when you actually watch the game, what he does and his footballing, the guys that he beats, the, the space that, that he creates, the opposing players that he takes out of the game will create situations that will in turn lead to a goal. And that is what needs to happen because Hazard is that magician that can really help do something. And from what I saw there, I think Real Madrid, I think they'll, they'll do pretty good. They will play well. But I think playing well will not lead to results. Because you could argue that Real Madrid played better than Atletico Madrid overall in this game. But it's 4-2. Atletico Madrid won the, the Super Cup and deservedly so. They des Atletico Madrid deserved to, to win it because they took their chances. Real did not take their chances. So um, I don't think it's a case of where Real Madrid, you need to go out and get it. And get someone. You have to get someone. You cannot go into a new. And look at what Barcelona are doing. Look at what Dembele is doing. Look at who they bought. Wait, have Real Madrid have they bought anybody? Like, are they like poor or something? So, yeah, man. Um, but I think you have to give it off Atletico. I'm going to be watching them. Um, I do think that you know they could they could make things interesting. I still can't put them as La Liga favorites. I'm still as a right down Barcelona are clear strong favorites for La Liga right down. But look, man, let's see what Atletico do. do. But guys, give it up to Diego Costa. All right. That dude easily Diego Costa. He has put everyone on notice. And I think Costa has made a strong argument that you have to put me as one of the best strikers out there. I think he's the best striker right now in the world. But it's an argument of, look, man, look at what I've done. Look at what I can do individually. Look at the goals I can bring and the kind of goals I'm bringing. So I think that's what do for me is Diego Costa. Brook of the game. Sorry, man. I've got to give it to Varane. Arguably, it's the Real Madrid defence, but if you could give it to an individual, it's going to be Varane. He was at fault for at least 12, 12 of those goals, especially the, the first goal from, from Costa. And I believe it was the um, the, the, the the one that led to the um, Saul goal. Again, indecision, not making the, the right tackle. I think it's, it's maybe a case of where he's either tired, he still has World Cup jet lag, and he just wasn't fully switched on. So, so again... Which I was actually discussing with, with some Spanish guys um, at a at a bar that we we're watching us, and one of the guys who's a Real Madrid fan, he actually said, "Look, man, don't you don't have to pick the best team. Pick the guys who are fully fit, because the guys who may not be, be fully fit and ready." So he was saying that, "Look, man, if Varane is not fully fit and still sorry from World Cup jet lag, bring in a guy who is fully fit and able to fully um, concentrate." So look, man, that is it, man. Atletico Madrid, man. Look, man. I don't know. Guys, tell me, can, do you really think Atletico Madrid can win La Liga? Honestly speaking, I don't know. Real Madrid, if Real do not get a star player, a star attacking player, and they do not sort out the, the defence, because that defence needs to be sorted out. If they do not sort out the, the defence, defensive organisation and concentration, and they do not get an attacking player to help bring some magic into this team, Real Madrid are not sniffing La Liga. And they, I'm sorry, that team I see there, will, will do good and play well. That team I see there, is not prepared and built to battle what Barcelona do. Because Barcelona right now, I'm looking at that team, they are fully prepared. That team is ready. That team is ready to go for a treble. <laughs> this Real Madrid team are not even thinking of a treble. And I don't, as of right now, I don't think they're sniffing a La Liga title. So things need, need to be done. And Perez, you have to buy someone. These guys need at least two or three players. They need at least two or three players. Like, players we're getting old with two or, two or three dudes to come in and try and change things. All right, guys. Peace out. Stay true. Watch out for more analysis. Peace. Thank you for watching this video. Think about pledging and become a Half of Football Hot patron. Pledge an amount each month and gain access to exclusive videos from your boy, the Football Hot, for more analysis. Peace.